Hey there everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Artifacts and today I'm going to show you how you can make your track sound a little bit heavier by using parallel distortion. Let's get to it. I'm going to show you how you can make your track sound a bit heavier by using parallel distortion. So I'm going to start by making a return track. What I'm doing here is I'm going to keep the track um, the dry track, I'm going to keep that the same, so I'm not applying anything to that. I'm just sending a copy of that off to a return track. That is going to be distorted, and that is then mixed with the track to taste to make it sound a bit heavier. So I'm going to show you the track that we are going to be demonstrating this on first. This is the track right now. So that's what I have right now. Now I created a new return track right here. So you can just do that, click here, right click and insert return track. Um, on that return track, I'm gonna apply some distortion, but first we need to send something to it. So I have a couple of things that I wanna send to it. I wanna send the bass to that return track. I also wanna send the atmosphere to the return track. And I also wanna send the vocals to the return track. So basically everything except for the drums. I don't want the drums to interfere with the distortion on this track because that probably will make everything sound very muddy and very, um, well, too distorted. I don't want the drums to be any more distorted than what they already are. So the other elements though, need to gel together nicely. And I think I can do that with a bit of parallel distortion. So. Let's send the bass to it. Now the bass is going to be sent to this return track, the loudest of all the three groups, because I want the bass to trigger the distortion. That is the key here. I want the bass to trigger the distortion, kind of like the last tutorial video I did where I showed the noise bass trick. So if you haven't seen that, click the little uh, notification at the top of the video right now, the little notification card, and that will send you to that video. Um, I'm sending that to the return track with about minus 10 decibels. Um, you kind of want to play around with that a bit. I'm going to do the same for the atmosphere, but this one is going to be sent to it with minus 13 decibels. So a little bit lower than the bass is being sent to it. That means that the bass is going to come into the return track a little bit louder than the other two um, groups. So the vocals also minus 13 decibels. So now I can go to my return track. And I'm going to lower the volume a bit of this one. So let's lower it to, well, maybe minus 8 decibels just to make it a bit lower. And I'm going to put Isotope Trash on this return track. That's the first thing that I'm going to do. So let's load that up. And now we have, if I solo this return track and if I play it, you're going to hear, well, kind of like a version of the track without the drums. So that is what is being sent to the return track. So let's bring that volume back down to minus eight decibels. Okay, let me type that in, minus eight decibels. And now we can start applying distortion to this return track to make it sound more interesting. So if I, for instance, do this, we now get this. So you can hear we can start distorting this particular thing. Now, what I'm gonna do, um, let's reset the curve. Let's go in here and I'm gonna find one of these distortion types. So I'm gonna go for crunchy grunge. I think that will be a good one to use. And let's bring the drive up quite a lot to about 7.5 maybe. And let's have a listen to what this sounds like right now. Okay, so that is starting to be really distorted. Now, there's one thing that I want to do. Um, I'm going to lower this up a little bit with this filter that we have here. So I'm just going to take the first point, make it nice and narrow, and just drag that down a bit. So I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of the sub. That cleans up the distortion and makes the mid-range come up a little bit more, which is kind of what I want. But you can hear how the sub is triggering the distortion, because if I take the bass away... Wait, didn't I send the bass to it? Oh wait, I, I sent the wrong track to it. If I take the bass away, I should by the way send this one to it, but if I take it away, 
that mid-range synth is going to be just this more distorted but it's not really it's not getting the 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 artifacts of the distortion that are being caused by the sub bass because when i send the sub bass to this you can hear how it interferes and with that main lead synth and it creates these weird artifacts because of the distortion and that is what I want. So now I'm going to go and take an EQ, I'm going to put that after the isotope trash and I'm going to high pass it so that we don't get the sub anymore. <laughs> because that is what I want to have. Now I'm going to bring the volume all the way down and I'm going to play the drop and I'm going to bring the volume up slowly of this track and I'm going to mix it in to taste. So let's play this. I'm going to loop a section here. Let's loop this section and let's have a listen. So now we have a bit more of a distorted version of the track. Um, I'm mixing it into taste, so I'm basically m I'm bringing the volume up here until I can start to hear the distortion clearly, and then I back it down a little bit. So it's not that audible. Um, you won't really notice it when you listen to the track and when you don't know it's there. But when you look at the project and play it and turn the track off li like halfway through playing back the track, you're going to notice it immediately, that it sounds quieter, that it sounds less full. And just to demonstrate, this is with... <laughs> And this is without. Now I'm overdoing it a little bit here. I probably want to back this down to maybe minus 11 or minus, minus 12 decibels, something like that. Just to get a little bit of extra grit, but not too much. So there you have it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to get up to 100,000 subs and it would be great if you can help me out. I'm doing live streams and tutorials every single week. So if you want to see a tutorial video, subscribe to this channel because I'm doing two a week, two videos a week. And I'm also doing a live stream every Friday. So if you have some time upcoming Friday, then tune in at 8 p.m. Central European Summer Time, which is GMT plus two for another music production live stream. I hope to see you guys back soon. Peace.